Welcome back to MacBrick Studio. We're here at the Pixel Core Studios in San Rafael, and we welcome back special guest Sam Nesman. It's great to be back. Thanks as always, Steve. Yeah, it's really great to have you here. Sam is always playing with the latest toys and hardware and server stuff, and he's like pushing Final Cut Pro 10 it's limits in terms of what you can do quickly with Final Cut. Well, basically, I just have too much time on my hands. Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so, but bas essentially, what happened was a couple of years at NAB, I ran into Chris Rose, and, and I'm a colorist, um, so I finish movies. And basically, Chris Rose from Tangent came in, and he's like, you know, we have this thing, the Tangent Mapper, where you can go and map keys. Um, where Did that intrigue you when he said that? Like, I was like, so would this work in Final Cut? He's like, I don't know why it wouldn't. Right. And then I spent way too much time going mm -hmm. in and trying to map every single command in Final Cut to the tangent element so that whether I'm in Resolve or I'm in Final Cut, I get a lot more functionality out of my control panel now. Right. So this is, you want to talk about the tangent control panel and specifically with Final Cut Pro 10. So for colorists out there who've already got one of these sitting in their edit room, this is free now on the Tangent site as part of your Tangent Hub download. And basically, it is full Final Cut 10 integration um, with the Tangent element. And you can go really deep. And once I actually started using this, I've actually started editing this way all the time. And actually, now I miss it when I don't have it because I can work way faster with some of these things like the knobs and wheels. And literally, all of these keys are, are positioned in a way where you can move a little bit faster. So basically, uh, I guess I'll just dive in and kind well, of show you some. I have my phone so we can kind of get, uh, we can get some B, B cam of uh, you right. operating the, the tangent. Okay, so basically here's kind of how this works, right? So if we, I've got just a little timeline here. And, you know, just to start, you obviously can go a little bit further with Jog Shuttle. You've got Next Edit, Previous Edit. And just right off the bat, I can start doing things like selecting the right and left edge or, or both edges and I can go and start editing those. When you say edges, you're talking about selecting the edit point just by tapping a button. So for instance, if we zoom in here, which I can do right with this little knob here, which makes this far more inefficient than pushing command plus and minus all the time, I can go dive in. And now if I go and select the right audio edge by holding down the A modifier here, you're going to see this is going to open up that right audio edge of that clip. And now I can edit that right here from my control surface, and I can nudge it on the frame level. I can also nudge it on the many frame level. I can nudge it on the subframe level, back and forth, and I can nudge many subframes. And these are all controlled by the little dial, so I can go and immediately just kind of dive in and get at the subframe level and get exactly the right audio edit that and, I want. Uh, I guess there's some, how, how, do you, how would you map this specifically in Final Cut Pro? Is it how, how easy is it to program? It's extremely easy. So I, you come standard with my mapping, mm -hmm. and then basically the, you can go in and there's a little application called the Tangent Mapper. Ah, and it, there and you essentially go. Essentially, <laughs> you just, it's really simple. You just go in here and you select a key that corresponds mm -hmm. to one of these panels, right. and then you put in a keyboard shortcut on it. So you can literally map all of the standard Final Cut 10 keyboard shortcuts on here, and you can map them to knobs and wheels. And basically, you can get lots more functionality. It's way more tactile. You can position the things anywhere you want and pretty much edit entirely from a control surface using the different buttons, knobs, and wheels. If it's been mapped in Final Cut, it can come on here. So let's talk specifically about how you use it. I mean, certainly there's a lot of bu uh, bells and whistles on this, and I, I could see this could be really handy for switching modes mm -hmm. and panes and panels, but you're a filmmaker, you have a site, we make movies. How do you use it most efficiently? What is the, the best thing about it for you as a Final Cut Pro 10 user? Well, right off the bat, color correction is where most um, mm -hmm. panels get used. So I was like, all right, well, can I put the color board in this? Can I do right. something that's usable here? So right off the bat, this becomes extremely sure. usable. So I can go and hover it. Say I wanted to color correct this clip. I can literally go and select this clip using this key here. And now, if I go into my color mode, because I'm in color, it's just pushing the B modifier. I can get into all of my different modes. I want to get into color. So now I'm in color, and I'm going to go immediately and take this clip into the color board. Now that brings me into the color board here, and I can go and move pucks just by using this little dial here. But what I can also do is I can bring the pucks up, bring them down, and it's very responsive. It's very tactile the way you would expect from a control surface. But if I hold the B modifier here and I move the ring, I can go to the different panes right in, right inside the uh, color board, and I can immediately move between panes. So it's basically like having a color surface where I can move and, and modify whatever I need just right here without any clicking. Now, 
the amount of control, let's say for a contrast or excuse me, exposure, it's still limited by the incrementation that's built into Final Cut. So you're not going to be if it's like does like 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Well, not... basically, it's limited by what the nudge puck up and nudge okay, puck down. That's what I was asking. Yeah. So it, whatever the nudge value is in Final Cut, that's the increment it's going to go up. That's what I wanted to. Good. You answered my question. Excellent. So it's all just keyboard shortcuts mapped to a control surface, but it's extremely responsive. I mean, the, the reality is like I'm able to go and depending on how I want to edit, you know, I can go and do pretty much anything I want a lot faster here than if I was on a keyboard. So basically, if you are a colorist at home and you're like, I really love how this works with DaVinci Resolve and some of these other things, you now have a really powerful tool that comes into your edit room um, that maps with Final Cut. Also, a little bonus is there's motion and logic maps too for this. Nice. I'm, my first thing is like our, our, our viewers are probably going, well, how much is the Tangent. It's totally free. Oh, the tangent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally free. The tangent free. itself. Send these I out to is, whoever asked for them. Uh, I think the tangent itself. Well, you can get it by the individual panels. So for right. Final Cut, if oh, you yeah, just they are wanted it, modules. Yeah, I see that. If you just wanted, for instance, the most useful module, I think, are these two here, which brings you to the modes and buttons. Uh, these three, are, I think, are the most useful. And these, the knobs especially, which allow you to zoom in. I can go hover over a clip, for instance, if I select this clip, and I just hover over this. Um, I can adjust the volume of this clip just right in here. I can also change the waveform size immediately as I go through the edit. Yes. And basically, that I think is just a couple hundred bucks, you know. And you but can, each one of those little each one of those. So one these, of these two modules, I think, are a lot cheaper. The KB, I think, is a couple hundred dollars, um, and I think this is the I forget exactly the name, but this is the TK here, and this is I think six or seven hundred dollars and i think so is this one right. but these guys are a little all together i know it comes out to about seventeen hundred to two thousand yeah. dollars i think for the whole set but you don't need the whole set and this is the the actual software and all of that stuff that comes with it is totally free nice uh i think would you say that using um control service like this in terms of color grading that once you once you've used this you really don't want to go back to using the mouse again I mean, <laughs> basically, I think once you actually start editing with this, you, I don't I do use the keyboard less and less in all of the keyboard shortcuts. I would say this is probably more for power users who are like dedicated with a Mac sure. Pro setup, who are coming in and bringing clients in and all of that, sure. and who are also going to other applications where this, where this is useful. Because when you really get into Resolve, having the color balls and wheels is, you don't go back. You don't go back to the mouse sure. once you do that. Yeah, because you can be adjusting uh, the, the the mids and the, the shadows mm -hmm. and at, at the same time. And then you're you pushing do and the you're doing a, especially with Lutz, you're like pushing and pulling, you know, the highlights and the shadows at the same time. Uh, you can only do that one at a time in, with the mouse. So. Well, and the real thing with it too is there's a certain feel that comes right. into play. So like, it's also what I've found too is like, I can get a lot more in the flow just doing this. So for instance, I can go and delete a clip just with a gesture, right? right, right. And then I can go immediately into my browser here and I can go and edit these directly into the timeline. And this is all gesture based. And now I can go and I can come down into my timeline and come back and I'm going to select this clip. And now I'm going to delete it right out of my timeline. I can undo that and I can redo that. And basically it becomes extremely like gesture based and it's, it's a far more like intuitive. I get lost in this a little bit more. It actually makes editing a lot nicer. So I'm not going to say this is mandatory in terms of editing. But like once you get used to it, you you get very very used to it. Excellent. Well, thanks for bringing your show and tell here to the Mac Break Studio <laughs> set. You know, like I said, he he always has new hardware and stuff. And uh, we'll be talking in the now. We're doing the virtual user group today, and we'll be talking about hardware. Um, so. Tell us a little bit about what you do. We make movies. We make movies .com and so we make movies org is our uh, you know it's basically the first the world's first as far as I know community funded production company where basically the members get together and they select what gets made and basically they pay for what gets made through the membership and our rolling production fund and we have our first finals coming up in March on the first short that is fully community funded through membership money. So um, there's that and then. Uh, Luma Forge, Luma Forge and uh, FCP Works, and so we kind of bounce between this, but it's all really part of the same thing, which is trying to make the act of making movies a little easier. Excellent, excellent. Well, thanks for coming, Sam. Thanks for thanks for being here. Um, hope you got a lot out of that. I think it's a great thing to to have in the edit bay. So.
check us out or check uh, We Make Movies, check out Luma Forge, check out um, <laughs> FCP Works. I can keep, keep track of where he's at. But yeah, all those places he just mentioned, check us out at Ripple Training, at uh, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Uh, thanks for watching another episode of Mac Break Studio. We'll see you next week.